Don't forget that your skin is your largest organ and the sun can be your skin's worst enemy. Dermatologist recommended Neutrogena products offer the ultimate protection for your skin. From makeup remover wipes to Hydro Boost Water Gel Facial Moisturizer, BJ's has your entire lineup of Neutrogena skincare products. And now through December 3rd, save $4 on any Neutrogena product at BJ's. Love your skin back and save now through December 3rd, only at BJ's. It's Monday. It's November 6th. And the word of the day is circumcock, which means a roundabout process that never seems to get to the point. Used in a sentence, I just checked OnlyFans and there is not a circumcock themed edging expert named Sir Cumcock, and that is a huge oversight. He, right? You know what is fine? You can stop pitching me alternate careers. We don't need to do this anymore. <laughs> right. No, he'd have to specialize in, like, the reach around about. Like, where you're going to give them a reciprocal <laughs> hand job, but, you know, eventually. You're going to get there yeah, eventually. You'll exactly. get there. You'll get yeah. there. Engineers say it's actually a better way to get a hand job, but it, it feels <laughs> like it's not. <laughs> I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Michael Marshall. I'm Heath Enright. And broadcasting delayed from both sides of the pond, we are the Skeptocrats. On this week's episode, Donald Trump's gag orders expand to the literal. Dominic Cummings will teach the BBC some naughty words. And Trump's legal team defends him from the abolitionists of Colorado. But first, the rest of the intro music. Joining me for headlines tonight are my fellow skeptic rats, Michael Marshall and Eli Bosnick. Gentlemen, happy belated Halloween. So before we start, what is the best candy? Okay, but like I could just lie here and like make up some British sweets. Um, so I'm going <laughs> to go with yeah. uh, Curly Whirly, uh, Palmer <laughs> Violets and what? the Sherbet Double Dip. Okay, I feel like all of he's double bluffing us and those are all real. This is yeah, what those I, are I was going to guess those are real. real. Okay, yes, they are. They are. Yeah. <laughs> all right. From the country that brought you wine flavored tooth removal gummies. <laughs> yeah, right. Curly whirlies. They're not wine flavored. They taste nothing like wine. Okay, sherbet double dip. Is that like fun dip where you have the the sugary stick thing and you lick it and then you dip it into the like sugar powder? Is yeah, that it? Yeah, you get two different flavors of sugar powder. So you can you can go to one dip and then dip into a second sugar powder. Like a, a rhubarb and custard kind of thing going on. Of course they have a better version. Yeah. Smart. Okay. In our lead story tonight, I thought it might be fun to check in with Donald Trump and see how he's doing. And you can listen closely. Do you hear that? You, you can hear... um. The nothing, because he officially has to shut the fuck up, according to multiple federal judges in multiple states. He's got gag orders like the BDSM tab. That includes an expanded gag order out of his New York trial and a pending gag order on hold in his Washington, D.C. trial. And he should probably shut the fuck up about Georgia stuff, too, because that trial is going very badly for him and his co-defendants. Those would be the remaining idiots in Georgia who didn't flip fast enough to matter. So they're still in trouble. Yeah, I think at this point, the only person not to flip on Trump is the guy who helped him fake bone spurs to dodge the draft to Vietnam. <laughs> and yeah, he literally just turned state's evidence right for a second. He just oh, did it right now. you yep. hate yep. to see it. Yeah. Look, I'm not saying our legal system has caught up with Trump's stupidity. That's an impossibility. But the consequences are getting pretty close. It's pretty... We're getting some of those consequences. <laughs> Good close. times. So I'll start with the trial in D.C. That's the one about Trump inciting a violent coup attempt against the country whilst president of that country. Now, in fairness to Trump, that plan was extremely stupid and had no chance of preventing Joe Biden from taking office. But being so stupid it couldn't possibly work is not a solid legal defense. If only, <laughs> then right. If only. <laughs> and neither is making veiled and unveiled threats on social media against prosecutors, and potential witnesses. So that's why Judge Tanya Chutkin put a gag order on Trump soon after that trial started. But then she called a timeout on the gag order out of an abundance of caution to make sure everything was more than fair to Trump while he gets prosecuted. And that's when Trump immediately threatened more people right the fuck away. So the gag order went back on. But most recently, Trump's attorneys were able to appeal that order and get another timeout. 
Yeah. You know that scene in every comedy heist movie where one person is like, do you promise not to scream if I take out the gag? And then the other person immediately screams. It's like that, but it's the former president of the United States. Sure is. Right. Yeah, it, it is. Except Trump is the criminal and not the victim in this scenario. So it's yeah. it's also a bit like when the police agree to uncuff you during the interview and you decide that's the time to reach for the officer's gun. That's basically mm-hmm. what's happening as well. <laughs> Starts doing nunchuck moves with it. Yeah. And Here's the argument made by Trump's team to get the latest stay on the gag order. According to their filing, quote, the gag order bristles with hostility to President Trump's viewpoint, end quote. And, um, yop, sure does. (laughs) Sure does. Also, just for the record, even when the gag order is active, it does not prevent Trump from disparaging Washington, D.C., where the jury is drawn from, nor does it prevent critical comments about the Justice Department. Those are both allowed because Trump's team specifically made that request that those be allowed. (laughs) And Judge Chuck, was like, yeah, yeah, man, go ahead and anger the jury and the prosecution in general during (laughs) your trial. Go to town, man. Uh, But like the defense team made the specific request for Trump to be able to insult D.C. while he was there. Like he's a bad Ross comic who just really wanted to do a tight five while he was in town. (laughs) This is what's happened. (laughs) Yep, pretty much. And that's going to bring us to the trial in New York. That's the one about the Trump Corporation being a giant scam that very clearly lied about their numbers to get better deals on loans and insurance. According to New York Attorney General Letitia James, the Trump family made at least $250 million in profit from that fraud. And if they lose the trial, the company is going to face a huge fine and possibly be entirely kicked out of doing any business in the state of New York. So good times. Well, Just like in every aspect of his life, Trump needed a gag order for the trial. And he already violated the order twice, ringing up $15,000 in fines. Right, yeah, but he's definitely going to get a dubious loan from a foreign bank to pay those fines. And then he'll tell the IRS it was actually $25,000 in fines as well. That's what he's going to do here. (laughs) (laughs) So that's when he thought to himself, okay, technically... My lawyers can make all my illegal threats and then I'm not talking, can't get mad. So his defense (laughs) team made a bunch of ridiculous accusations about specifically the clerk for Judge Arthur Engeron. And Engeron was like, "Uh, "Okay, now you all have a gag order. There you go. And here's the complaint about the clerk from Trump's team. Trump's team is arguing that she's corrupting the trial because they saw her Roll her eyes during testimony. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> That's involuntary. <laughs> yeah. They also saw that she handed a piece of paper to the judge. And they were mad that they couldn't see the secret paper. So they started counting incidences of that happening. And by the end of the day, they counted 30 to 40 secret note passings. <laughs> judge Engeron responded by saying, Yeah, that's nothing. She's allowed to hand me paper. I'm going to have her hand me blank paper all the time now just to anger you. (laughs) Yeah, what the fuck? Were they moving for secret secrets are no fun? (laughs) Yeah, they're also moving for like no acting out emojis. Like, yeah, I'm talking to you, face smiling vacantly while slowly melting at the floor. Oh, wait, sorry, that's Rudy Giuliani. Sorry, my mistake. That's Rudy. That's Rudy. 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 Okay, in all seriousness, right? Fuck Trump, but like. That clerk and judge 100% have a trial rose thread going like Heath and I during a convention, right? Like, (laughs) like I'm fine with it, but that's 100% what was happening there. There's no doubt. Absolutely, (laughs) yes. And that brings us to the Georgia election trial. Trump hasn't even started his part of that, but it's already going so badly for him. As we mentioned last time around, Trump's co-defendants, Sidney Powell and Kenneth Cheesebro, narked on him right away. But at least one person is holding strong. That would be Harrison Floyd, whose charges include racketeering, conspiracy, and harassing an election official. According to his indictment, he showed up uninvited at the home of election worker Ruby Freeman. Just a reminder, Freeman was accused by Donald Trump of being, quote, a professional vote scammer and hustler. That's what Trump was talking to Brad Raffensperger. (laughs) And Rudy Giuliani falsely claimed that Freeman was somehow hacking the voting machines with USB drives that she was, quote, passing around like vials of heroin or cocaine. Is the manner of distributing the illegal USB sticks, is that the bit that matters in the hack? Apparently it does. (laughs) And what does it even mean to hand out USB sticks like heroin? 
Oh wait, no, this is Rudy Giuliani, isn't it? This is it's Blackly. It's Blackly. That's what I'm Oh yeah, sure no, is. there it is. We found it, everybody. Or homelessly? No, he would have killed him. <laughs> First, Ruby Freeman, person of color, absolutely correct. And here's my favorite part: Harrison Floyd is being charged with helping Trump try to steal the election, and Floyd's defense is. You actually stole the election. That was you who stole the election. That's his defense. In his latest appearance, Floyd argued that he can't be guilty of trying to steal Joe Biden's election because Joe Biden lost, so there was nothing to steal while he was intimidating election workers trying to steal something that didn't exist. Yeah, there is no way he wasn't picturing that meme of the guy tapping his forehead while he said that. You know? <laughs> For it's, sure. it's not theft if you manage to steal it before they get it. That's Harrison Floyd and every UPS delivery driver. Exactly. Yeah, yeah there you go. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> so Floyd is now demanding that the state of Georgia show him personally tens of thousands of physical ballots. And Judge Scott McAfee is actually going along with it for the moment. And yes, this whole thing is absurd and it's going to delay Floyd's case for a while. But McAfee seems to be like charmed and amused by the rare legal gambit of no, you are. And I get it. <laughs> that is amusing. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, like in the long arc of history, it's going to be pretty cool when they're like, all right, fine. It took us months at a time. But here you go. Here are all the ballots. And he's going to have to be like, nope. They're not <laughs> here. <Yeah. laughs> and speaking of people who should really think about getting their stuff in order, we're going to take a quick break for a word from our sponsor, Trust and Will. Hi, I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Michael Marshall. And I'm Heath Enright. You know, if we learned anything this week here at Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, it's that big life changes can come out of nowhere. And taking care of your loved ones might not be fun to think about, but when the alternative is wait for Heath to wake up and read his Facebook messages, it can be pretty I, important. I, I woke up. At noon, Heath. You woke up at That's, noon. Yes, woke up. Traditional estate planning can cost thousands of dollars, and one-size-fits-all templates might not capture all the important details of the life you've built. But with Trust & Will, you can protect your legacy from the comfort of your home starting at just $159. It's true. Anna and I used Trust and Will to set up our estate when they became a sponsor, and it was so easy that we immediately used it for my mom. Now we have safe, digitally secured, and notarized copies of our wishes, which helps loved ones avoid lengthy and expensive legal proceedings or having the state decide what happens to your assets. That's why I, Eli Bosnick, personally endorse Trust and Will. Gain peace of mind today with Trust and Will. Get 10% off plus free shipping of your estate plan documents by visiting trustandwill.com slash skeptocrat. That's 10% off and free shipping at trustandwill.com slash skeptocrat. Trust and will, because the new legal guardian of my toddler probably can't wait till noon. Wait, wait, wait. I, I get your kid if you die? Uh, no, Marsh does. Wait, what? Yeah, prank war. And we're back. And next up in headlines, in... Put the C into C-SPAN news, um, America. <laughs> you might currently be witnessing Donald Trump and his cronies finally seeing the inside of a courtroom, and that's that's got to be pretty satisfying as the the find out part of the equation goes. Yeah, but yeah. Out. But in case you missed it, we're also having a bit of a moment here in the UK too right now because the inquiry into the handling of the COVID crisis by Boris Johnson's government, that began to air some evidence they've gathered on the shit show that was Borjo. Um, and how good does that get? <laughs> Do you get? call him Bojo or is that just you? Is that No, like he does British get called Bojo. Yeah, that yeah, is, uh, that is really a like nickname a he gets in the media. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, but how does all this get? You, you might be wondering. Well, it gets very serious lawyer reading out a list of incredibly explicit insults live on primetime BBC <laughs> News levels of funny. Ooh, see, usually if I want to hear that, I have to make Andy Wilson renew the restraining order. So it's <laughs> exciting not to uh, be the cause this time. <laughs> so the, the most viral moment of this viral inquiry uh, was definitely when the barrister Hugo Keith KSC was cross-examining Dominic Cummings, who's the former special advisor to Boris Johnson. He's also the mastermind of the Brexit campaign, and he's the guy that you might remember claimed that he had to take his family out for like a 300-mile drive during lockdown when he was suffering from COVID because he, quote, needed to test his eyesight. What? Weird way to test your eyesight. Yeah. So, so Cummings is, to be clear, a bell end and a bully. Um, and that was kind of the point that Hugo Keith was trying to make when he was reading from Cummings' WhatsApp logs that have been submitted into evidence. Um, and that included the bits where Cummings calls government ministers 
quote, useless fuck pigs, morons, and cunts, unquote. Wow. And as I say, this was broadcast live on the BBC at 12.30 in the afternoon. It was <laughs> oh, utterly beautiful. Yeah. Um, still, I, I have to say, I can't really argue with the morons or the cunts bit of this. Like, he's got the, the politicians involved bang to rights there, 100%. But I don't think useless fuck pigs is actually fair. Because surely a fuck pig can't be completely useless. Like, definitionally, it has to have at least one use. Thank one. you. Yeah. Yeah. Skepticism. Which, yeah, it's it's one more use than anyone in the Boris Johnson government at the time. Yeah. Sure. And if you saw the documentary Black Mirror, you know just how useful <laughs> they can be. <laughs> okay, now I can hear Eli's brain working a fuck pig scenario into our D&D campaign, like, right now. This <laughs> I don't need to do it. I know badly. it'll rise naturally. <laughs> thousand monkeys, thousand typewriters, Heath. So speaking of Boris Johnson, evidence in the inquiry also gave us an insight into what was going on in what passed for his mind during the height of the pandemic, uh, including the time he asked the government's chief scientific advisor whether COVID could be killed by blowing a special hairdryer up your nose, which was something he'd seen in a YouTube video. Yes. And this is why we elect presidents who are too old to use YouTube, everybody. Okay. It's for a reason. <laughs> okay. But somewhere on Rumble, there's got to be a bunch of anti-vaxxers on video being like, freedom is hot though. But this is, <laughs> yeah. this is freedom. We're doing it. And okay. We're like this, it. this idea, it might sound ridiculous, but you've got to bear in mind, Boris is very obviously a man who has no idea what someone might actually use a hairdryer for. Because if his hair is ever that near to an external heat source, it just ignites like wildfire. Yeah, it's true. Uh, they, they always say that if you're in an emergency situation, dryer lint, Doritos, and Boris Johnson's hair make the best emergency <laughs> tinder. So. Yeah. We actually found his hair in the pile after 9-11. It was very interesting. It was in that plane in Pennsylvania. <laughs> And when Boris wasn't proposing this one weird trick to destroy the virus, uh, he was telling his leading scientists that, quote, COVID is just nature's way of dealing with old people. Yikes. And that the three million people over the age of 80 in the UK should just, quote, accept their fate. Like, at one point, he even WhatsApped his head of comms, Lee Kane, to argue that most of the people dying from COVID were older than the average life expectancy in the UK. That therefore meant that getting COVID made you live longer. This is, like, evil villain. Like, yeah. all the way evil villain. Yeah. On what's, like, he's like, is there a finger steeple emoji I can use <laughs> at the end of this? And Fuck. sadly, Kane didn't respond to, to check whether Boris had been trying that hairdryer thing again and whether he'd inadvertently <laughs> sent his brain flying out of one of his ears. <laughs> okay, Marsh, I, I can understand why people would be upset with that. But do you have any examples of things that I didn't also text Noah and Heath during COVID? I just, I'd like some different ones. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's still another week of this round of testimony in the COVID inquiry. Plus, next month, we'll get to hear from Johnson and Sunak themselves. So we're still quite far away from getting any conclusions here. But we do at least have an update on the former Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, who was announced last week as the latest presenter to join right-wing culture war propaganda clearinghouse, GB News. And uh, you might think it's a bit of a fall from grace to see the former leader of this country forced to rub shoulders with a bunch of conspiracy theorists who think the whole COVID thing was fake all along. But me... I just see it as nature's way of dealing with useless fuck pigs, morons, and cunts. Yep, yeah, no, it's, there you go. it's all coming together. <laughs> and in petty cash news, be it a parking ticket or an airport bag fee, I think we've all daydreamed about paying an unfair fine in a giant box of coins. We picture ourselves slapping the box down with a satisfying jingle, declaring our metal coins legal tender, whatever that means, while our oppressor boggles at the hundreds of lost hours they'll spend counting it. Public and private. I don't yeah, know exactly. I don't know what this means, but well, it's one of those. This week in Colorado, a judge ruled that of course you can't fucking do that and also benny was the good guy in rent like do we really need to explain these things yes thank you go kill some dogs for money and pay your rent thank you eli needed to be said benny was the good guy yeah so the pranksters in question are jmf enterprises a welding company that tried to pay a settlement with a former subcontractor fired up fabrications with twenty three thousand five hundred dollars in mixed coins in a <laughs> custom-made metal box which when full weighed just over three tons. 
According to court filings, it was too heavy to be carried in the freight elevator at the offices for Fired Up Fabrications lawyers, <laughs> let alone with the forklift they would have required to carry. <laughs> All right, here you go. Two million, two three hundred fifty thousand pennies on a forklift. There you go. Enjoy. Yeah, plus the custom-made reinforced metal box, which I really hope cost them like $24,000 to get made. I really hope it costs more than the money. Yeah. Now, uh, for their part, JMF Enterprises argued that the settlement agreement did not specify how the money was to be paid and said it had no intention of harassing fired-up fabrications, noting that both parties were, quote, very close friends before the lawsuit. But yeah, hilarious as that prank war is, the judge is a grown-up. And was like, nope, pay with a check, plus $8,000 extra in legal fees. So that's what they're going to have to do. Yeah, cut to JMF Enterprises handing over a novelty-sized check the size of a football field. Please yeah. see that next. <laughs> Either way, I definitely know who to call if we ever get successfully sued by a Christian movie maker now. And speaking of my self-destructive tendencies, let's turn things over to our second sponsor this week, BetterHelp. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Ho, ho, ho. Hey, Santa, you, you needed to see me? Oh, thanks for coming, Candy Cane. Santa's just a little stressed out by the holidays. Do you have any more of that perfect hot chocolate you make? I mean, I do, but Santa, if, if you're dealing with holiday stress, have you thought about therapy? Therapy? For holiday stress? Sure, therapy can be a bright spot amid all the stress and change. Something to look forward to, to, to make you feel grounded and to give you the tools to, to manage everything that's going on. I don't know, Candy Cane. I feel like it would be hard for me to find a therapist way up here at the North Pole. Well, if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, it's designed to be convenient, flexible and suited to your schedule. You just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. All right, Candy Cane, I'm in. Where does Santa sign up? Find your bright spot this season with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash skepticrat today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash skepticrat. Maybe I can work through my anger about the time I punched a guy at the Council of Nicaea. Sure. Because I did that. Yeah, we know, Santa. We know. Right in the face. And we're back. Next up in headlines, in one no Trump news. I know we let off the show with a big story detailing the many trials about Donald Trump being a giant piece of shit. But we couldn't fit all those trials into a single segment. So here we are with another. In the delightful state of Colorado, Witness testimony wrapped up last week in the election disqualification trial that could officially remove Donald Trump from the ballot in Colorado because you're not allowed to do a treason and then run for office on the traitor ticket. That's a rule. Yeah, tell that to George Washington. Never forget. Never <laughs> <Okay>. forget. <laughs> and a big thanks to Alex for the link. Skepticratnews at gmail.com. So the issue in Colorado is pretty simple. There's this thing called the 14th Amendment kind of a big deal. And honestly, if anybody was going to run afoul of the 14th Amendment in 2023, it was going to be Donald Trump. Yep. Right the fuck on brand. That or the World Cup, Heath, and we don't, we don't call them out for that. <laughs> so in addition to granting citizenship to all formerly enslaved people in the country, the 14th Amendment also has a provision that says any U.S. official who takes an oath to uphold the Constitution is banned from ever holding future office if they, quote, engaged in in insurrection. So, ban. That's a ban. Yeah, seems like the kind of law you'd only need for a country on the brink of civil war, but here we are, you know? Yep. <laughs> here we are. Useful. So, here's my favorite moment from the witness testimony. Trump's attorneys brought in a so-called legal scholar to take the stand, and he claimed that Trump's eligibility to hold public office should be decided by Congress instead of the courts. He said to the judge of the court, that's how it should work. And the response from Denver District Judge Sarah Wallace was just straight fire, no cap. So good. She said, quote, do you have examples of situations in which a court has basically said the Constitution is too hard for me to interpret? Therefore, I'm going to let Congress tell me what it means. 
And then we got a long pause. She just stares at the idiot. And he has nothing, of course. She continued, in general, I think that's exactly the job of the court to interpret the Constitution. So I'd love to hear from you as to why you think in this instance that what I need to do is say it's too hard, end quote. Yikes. Yeah, I'm sure it made it extra awkward when Trump's next legal scholar came in to argue that Judge Wallace didn't need to worry her pretty little head about it. And, you know, maybe she should should smile more. I think she should smile more. (laughs) Right. I mean, given who Trump appointed to the bench while he was president, he was probably pretty surprised to meet a judge who knew about laws. Right. Like that's. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, Appointed by Democrat governor of Colorado. So it works out. Yeah. (laughs) So, yeah, seems like the rules are pretty fucking clear on this. No doing insurrections and then holding office again. Official U.S. policy. Yet somehow, the fact that Donald Trump definitely did insurrection stuff is only known to the state of Colorado right now. Like like how California was the only place that knew about cigarettes being unhealthy for a while. I, I don't understand. That, yeah. Maybe this whole separate states thing, it's just not working. Have you thought about coming back? Like, we're even prepared would, to overlook mm. that whole, you know, George Washington treason against us thing. We'll, we'll, we'll water under the bridge. Oh, Marsh. Oh. Yes, yes. A thousand times yes. I, I know you're only doing it for to. our national gas, but <laughs> you can have it. I'm right back. Loyalist all the way. And <laughs> even in Colorado, the trial's not done yet because apparently this is a complicated issue. No, the fuck it's not. No, it's not. Hopefully, Judge Wallace agrees that it's not. Closing arguments are going to be heard on November 15th, and we should have a ruling shortly after that. And then maybe a few other states will remember about the whole treasonous insurrection kerfuffle and follow suit. And by the way, if anybody knows any of the other states, like personally, maybe shoot them a quick email with a reminder about what happened. Yeah, put That'd it be on their Trello. And in chat GP Rishi news, uh, this week, Rishi Sunak, the... <laughs> The business Ken doll brought to life and forced to leave my country. He took part in this super uncomfortably fawning interview with expert tech company destroyer and aspirational figure for a million Nazi spam bots, Elon Musk. And you know, you Lovely. might be thinking, it's pretty weird for Elon Musk to get the kind of access needed to do a live interview with an international leader like that. But sure. no, no, you're mistaken. It was Rishi Sunak that was doing the interviewing and the fawning <laughs> and the ego filating here. Okay, sorry, Marsh, why is your prime minister interviewing anybody? That's not that's not his job, right? No, no. He's it's got it's, a podcast. It's absolutely not, yeah. But you see, Sunak is well documented as wanting to be seen as a smart tech kind of guy. Like, to the point where he'd even put his 180-pound tech-powered coffee mug in publicity shots of him working Come when he's on. at number 10. Um, and that's why this week he'd invited all different world tech leaders to Bletchley Park, the home of the Enigma machine, for a, a summit on the future of AI. <laughs> okay, speaking of AI, I'm um, just checking with ChatGPT real quick about coffee. Uh, there you go. It says, drink your cup before it gets cold. What are you, five? Just finish <laughs> okay. it first. Okay, first of all, it's called the Ember, and some of us have wives who wander around the house like a Victorian ghost, okay? We can't all... Get a thermos, whatever, 180 pounds? Yeah, yeah, ludicrous. Come on. So after this whole summit, he decided to then try his hand at chat show host, inviting Musk for a cosy chat about various things like how to regulate AI and whether the UK should trust China, and whether Sunak was right to have invited China to his big special party of all the cool AI kids after all. Which, you know, totally normal for a world leader to be begging for diplomacy tips from a man who seems to get most of his political intel from blue-check white supremacist Twitter accounts with seven followers and a Pepe profile photo. Yeah, to be clear, I literally can't think of any topic I want Elon Musk's opinion on, let alone one as important as international relations. Yeah. <laughs> Blood but, emeralds, maybe? <laughs> not even, right? Because that was his dad. It was yeah, his dad. So not, even, not, not even that. No. He could ruin a blood emerald empire for exactly. sure. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, you've got to see all of this in context. Because Sunak knows that there's an election coming, probably mid next year. Certainly by the end of next year, they've got to call one. And the Tories could not be tanking worse than they are right now. They're currently 20 points behind Labour in the polls. And they keep losing every special by-election that keeps being called um, when yet another Tory MP has resigned in disgrace or been suspended or arrested or become an anti-vaxxer or a sovereign citizen. I'm confused. 
Oh, those are bad for getting elected in the UK. Oh, that's saying. what it is. Those okay, thank you, Heath. That's I was confused. Just you can see how we were confused. <laughs> okay, but I guess it's nice that Elon and Twitter are helping make Tories unelectable with rabbit holes about anti-vax bullshit and sovereign citizen stuff. Oh, 100%. That's helpful, I guess, for you. Because, like, seriously, since I was last on this show talking about by-elections, the Tories have lost two more seats in huge historic swings. And then there might be more to go yet, because just last week, MP Peter Bone was suspended for sexual misconduct. And then, like, a few days later, MP Crispin Blunt was arrested for rape. And for those counting, that's now eight Tory MPs to be suspended for sexual misconduct or sex crimes since the last general election in 2019. And the party party has then had to like deny they've got a predatory culture, which is really difficult to deny when your list of suspended sex pests is long enough to form a reasonable softball team. Uh, please, sure. Marsh, cricket team. Stay in character, okay? Stay in character. Yeah, but you only get enough for a cricket team if you add in the ones that got sacked for being racist. And I wasn't they, talking about Oh, that. sure, uh, yeah. yeah, no. Genuinely depressing, it, that is literally true. That is literally, yeah. it's 11 if you include the racist. Yeah. But, <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> meanwhile, you know, the remaining Tory figures who haven't been suspended for sex crimes, uh, they're somehow struggling to connect with the public, um, even when they try such vote-winning policies as announcing a ban on homeless people being allowed to sleep in tents which what? they actually proposed this week. Just as the country is going into winter, they said, right, we're going to ban tents for homeless people. Okay, it's tricky loopholes. We seized the tent, and now they're homeless, so it's so it's illegal to sleep in the... I'm a Dickens villain again. Fuck. Yeah. Keeps happening. So with the Tories facing a likely electoral wipeout next year and Sunak's political prospects crumbling like the concrete walls of a British high school, this weird chat with Musk was basically his advanced job interview for a future position in Silicon Valley. Which, you know, in any luck, by the end of 2024, we'll see Sunak's career take the next step it really deserves. Going on Rogan to smoke weed with some anti-vaxxers. <laughs> yeah, there yeah, obviously. It's a straight line. <laughs> and finally tonight, in Swan Song News, if I have a favourite fact about England, as anyone who stood still for long enough next to me at QED knows, it's that the crown of England owns all the swans. Not all the swans in England, all the swans. Yeah. And in the absurd spirit of that conclusion, and with England's dedication to universal health care unwavering, this week a flock of swans descended from a 1957 gift of two mute swans in Florida received their annual physicals from the British government. Absolutely. Fun fact, the S in NHS actually stands for swans. That's what that stands for. <laughs> also, technically, the crown owns all the mute swans in the realms. You're making it sound silly, Eli. Yeah, it's obviously. not every single swan in the world. That would be ridiculous. Right. But that's only because all the non-mute swans were able to declare independence from the crown. You know, we only get to keep the, the mute ones because it's really hard to do sign language when you've got wings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... This flock is about 50 swans at this point, and they reside for most of the year in Lakeland, Florida. Uh, the article I read didn't say where they are the rest of the year, but like all other 70-year-old residents of Florida, I assume New York or Long Island. <laughs> The swans are Jews. One other fact about the crown's ownership of swans. England still has laws on the books that killing an English swan is treason. Mm -hmm. And people who killed one stood trial as recently as 2010. Side note, while I was <laughs> researching insane. when the last swan <laughs> totally pardoning normal. happened, I came upon this fucking amazing sentence. Quote, Toby Earnscliffe, prosecuting, told Bedford Magistrates Court the allegation was the defendant at 3 a.m. pounced on a swan. Yeah, End totally real quote from a thing I read with my eyes. Totally normal. What's wrong with this? Okay, so I read about this too a little bit. Apparently, like, MI5 is keeping tabs on all the royal swans at all times because the swan pouncing attack at 3 a.m. was reported immediately to the authorities. And when the cops showed up, the guy who pounced on the swan was just covered in swan blood and feathers. And they were like, did you kill that swan? He's like, yeah, it's in the bag right there. I tackled it and I want to eat it. And so he had a trial. At the first hearing, his defense lawyer said, I'd like a timeout so I can research bird law. And that was given. That timeout yep. was given. That all happened for real. Yeah. So, yeah, if America ever feels absurd to you, just remember that... The U.S. to U.K. visa is a minimum of three months and that our swans have better health care than you do. 
And on that note, we're going to close it out. Thanks to No Illusions. Thanks to Michael Marshall. Thanks to Eli Bosnick. And thanks to all the listeners who liked us and followed us on all the various internets. Please keep doing that. Please keep listening. And please keep telling your friends. And if you find the naive stupidity of our giving away a free show business model to be oddly charming, you can send us gifts of money at patreon.com slash skeptocrat. Just like all the generous new donors, you will be thanked next time around. And whether or not you're feeling financially benevolent like those fine people, if you enjoyed our brand of whimsy and you'd like to hear more dick jokes free of charge, check out our brother and sister shows, The Scathing Atheist, God Awful Movies, D&D Minus, and Citation Needed, available in all the podcast places. We just have one last thing. Let's compliment that penis. Special thanks to Ryan Slonick of Evil Giraffes on Mars. He's the creator of the virtuosic musical stylings you heard today, which were used with permission. You should definitely check him out using the links we'll provide or by Googling the only band called Evil Giraffes on Mars. Until next time, catchphrase sign off. which helps loved ones avoid lengthy and expensive legal proceedings or have the state decide what happens to our assets. That's why I... I think you said or have instead of having. Which helps loved ones avoid length... Which helps loved ones avoid lengthy and expensive legal... Which helps loved ones avoid lengthy and expensive legal proceedings or have the state decide what happens to your you, assets. You, you, you said the having. same thing. Having. <laughs> yeah. Which helps loved ones avoid lengthy and expensive legal... Pro- Fucking <laughs> Which this is fun. Here we go. Mars, tackle me. <laughs> the best part about that prank is if I did it, Marsh would take him and have the worst life. There's no way Marsh would be like, this was intended as a prank. I'm not going to do this. <laughs> no, that's Even true. with this record, he would be listening to this recording. And he'd be like, there's an off chance that this is a double bluff. And now I have to raise... A small Jew. Yeah, here's here that funny joke that Eli made about the very real thing he wants to happen. This counts as your will and testimony. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. That's why I'll bring him up British. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> Nicola can teach him to speed walk. <laughs> Vape like Uncle Andy. Y'all set up. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved. Don't forget that your skin is your largest organ, and the sun can be your skin's worst enemy. Dermatologists recommended Neutrogena products offer the ultimate protection for your skin. From makeup remover wipes to Hydro Boost Water Gel Facial Moisturizer, BJ's has your entire lineup of Neutrogena skincare products. And now through December 3rd, save $4 on any Neutrogena product at BJ's. Love your skin back and save now through December 3rd, only at BJ's.